one of the top bantamweight MMA fighters in the world, training at one of the best, if not the best, gyms in the world. He boasts a 14-2 and two record. And by the way, both defeats to top fighters, they were very competitive battles. He is preparing for the Bellator Times 2 Ryzen Megan event. McKee versus Pitbull, he's on the main card. Hey, don't ever count out the hardworking, hard-training Italian gangster, Danny Sabatello, or you might find yourself like his opponents swimming with the fishes. Thank you, Danny. Hey, just tell me, first of all, about being a part of this mega card in Japan. This is awesome. Go for it, Danny. Yeah, first off, that was an amazing intro. I fucking love that. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to be a part of this. You know, obviously it's every fighter's dream to fight in Japan because the Japanese crowd, they know they're fucking fighting. Uh, they are a very respected crowd. You know, a lot of people in MMA in America don't really know what the fuck they're looking at. You know, they just scream, ah, oh, punch him, kill him in there. They don't know any fucking techniques behind it. I think the Japanese crowd is very intelligent over there. They understand when a fighter is setting traps or using their skills or knowledge of fighting and applying it. Um, and, you know, you just look at how they view fights and it's very silent over there when the fights are going on. Um, and that just shows that these guys are really major fans of this sport. You know, they don't view it as, oh, it's just something to watch and let's just go crazy. You know, they really take in and breathe in the techniques that go on in it. And I think the Japanese crowd is really in for a treat when they see me fight because I'm a very technical fighter. And they're going to understand that Danny Sabatella, the Italian gangster, is an absolute showman. You know, like I said, they are usually silent during their fights, but it's my goal to get them rowdy and pure chaos in there. I think I can change Japan. I can change the way they view fights, especially mine. Um, and so it is going to be a little bit different walking out and when they're silent and not very talkative, um, but I'll get them on their feet very quickly. If anyone can do it, the Italian gangster can. I'm going to tell you that right now. You watch his fights. Man, there are balls to the walls. He brings the action. He always brings the intensity. And I believe part of that has to do with, Danny, you're always training. You're always getting ready, whether or not you know when you're fighting, not when you're fighting at the Great American Top Team in South Florida. But I am curious, Danny, has the training, the thought about how you train, has that changed since you've been starting your fighting or is it always still just go, 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 go? Nope, not at all. Nothing has changed. Nothing will ever change. You know, I train at the best gym in the world, American Top Team. And the good thing is, we know it's the best gym in the world. We know that that's a formula for breeding champions. You look at Alexander Pantojo, who just won a UFC title last weekend. So we do know if you're not successful and you're at American Top Team, that's on you. Because the formula is there, the teammates are there, the coaches are there. It's all on you to put in the work. And you know what I do? I put in the fucking work. I go twice a day, every day, in camp or out of camp. I'm always in the gym. That's what also allows me to talk my shit is knowing that nobody's working harder than me. Nobody has the God-given gifts of being tall, the conditioning, and all other areas that I exceed in. So, you know, overall, nothing will ever change. You know, if I ever need help in a specific area, I'm very fortunate that American Top Team is a mega gym and they'll be able to offer it. You know, if I'm fighting a guy with a certain style, whether it's a karate background or a jujitsu background, I can always have the help I need from my coaches and my teammates there. So with this fight specifically against bitch ass Magomed, he's not really too much of an expert in one area. So I'm pretty much just going with all different guys around the gym, you know, up until Alexander Pantoja's title fight. I was going with him a lot just because he's very elite. And, you know, one thing is this. I'm not training to beat Magomed. I'm training to beat everyone in the fucking world at Bantamweight. And you've been doing your job at that. And you, that leads me to my next thing. I know no fighter really wants to look too far ahead. But I'm curious, have you thought at all a victory over Magomed, Magomedov, what that gets you? I guess, hey, rankings are rankings, so I don't want to get into all the numbers there. You're a top-ranked guy. He's a top-ranked guy. I'll just leave it at that. So this should be an excellent, real good battle. But if you thought about that, hey, I beat this guy. This is where it puts me. Yep, absolutely. You know, every night before I lay my head on the pillow, of course, I visualize that strap around my waist. I need to be holding that gold. I need to be holding that belt. Um, You know, you don't want to look past a certain opponent because obviously Magomed can be a little bit tricky. He can put somebody's lights out because he spins a lot. Um, if he does catch me, he obviously could knock me out. I don't see that happening, but it's obviously a possibility. Anything's a possibility in this chaos of a game. Uh, but, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say I, I looked a little bit forward. 
Um, and, you know, after this fight, I really do think that I should get a title shot, but if not, that's okay. Maybe one more and then the title shot. You know, one thing I don't want to happen, though, is to go inactive, you know, based on timelines. And I know Patchy and Pettis is next, so I don't know when that fight's going to be. I'm not going to sit on my ass. I'm not a guy that can just not fucking fight. You know, the reason why I do this shit is because I love it and no other fucking reason. I'm going to fight, whether it's for the belt or not for the belt. You know, after I beat the shit out of Magomed, if Bellator comes at me and they say, well, you know what, in six months, you'll face uh, Apache or Pettis or whatever. Um, do you want to hold off until your title fight? I would say, fuck that. No, don't even give me another fight. Give me two more motherfucking fights. I'm a fighter. I will lose my mind if I don't fight for six months, seven months, eight months. So, you know, hopefully the title is next. But if the title's not next, then just, just it's just the next motherfucker. Geez, Danny, what have you thought about when you were contacted and Bellator wanted you to be a part of this Bellator Rise in Times 2 mega card? Yeah, I was absolutely fucking pumped. You know, I've been calling out Magomed for a while now. After my last fight, after I beat the shit out of Marcos Breno, he was the first guy that was on my mind and I called him out. So I always wanted to fight Magomed. It's awesome that I finally got this matchup. He thinks he's a grappler, but you're not a fucking grappler when you face Danny Sabatello. You're a little bitch. Um, and, and what better place than Japan? You know, obviously it's very far. It's about an 18 hour flight, but fuck that. I don't give a shit. I'll try to get some sleep, whatever. I can suffer a little bit. I know he's going to suffer on a flight. Um, so it is what it is. The flight is what it is. Um, I've always wanted to go to Japan, but th make no mistakes. This is an absolute business trip. I'm not going over there to try no good, no good foods or anything like that. See the culture that shit can wait till after the fight or whenever, whenever I'm on an actual vacation this is a business trip, and I'm going there to beat the fuck out of Magomed. I don't really care too much where it is, but it is a little bit of a bonus being in Japan, knowing that those fans are fucking awesome. The bucket list off that. Check it off. Sabatella with the victory in Japan. That's what we're looking forward to seeing. And it's, it's so interesting because you talk a lot. Everyone knows that, but you back it up. And I'm just curious, Danny, were you always like that? Even as a youngster, always very confident, very confident in yourself and your abilities. Yeah, I was always talking shit. It's kind of what I love to do. You know, there's two things I'm really good at, and there's two things I love doing, and that's fighting and talking shit. You know, you don't get one without the other. I love this game because I can do fucking both. I don't talk shit for any reason other than that I just fucking love it, and I don't fight for any reason other than I just fucking love it. I don't know what the hell I'd be doing if I wasn't talking shit or fighting. Um, so that has been a thing that I've always been doing. You know, you could go back and look at my college highlights or my high school, even wrestling highlights. And you'll see that I've been the same intense dude talking shit. Um, I've gotten thrown out of wrestling matches before. Um, I really do. I do have a, a wrestling highlight video from high school even. And you can even go back and watch that. And you'll see that I'm the same guy. Nothing has changed about me and nothing will ever change. You know, win or lose, I am who I am. This is just who I'm going to be. You got to fucking accept it. If you don't like it, you can talk shit back. That's totally fine. You're probably a pussy, but that's totally fine in my book. Um, and I'll never be changing no matter what. And I just, I, Danny, it, I would been, I would have loved to have gone to like your senior year, the like after the season and when the wrestling team might have like an award ceremony night. And they put like a little video package together of you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because I do have that. I'll probably send out a link or something on my Instagram story or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I've been pretty much the same dude. I've always been tough. I've always been pushing people around. Um, you know, one thing I do really believe is in his mental, mental warfare. Um, and there's even a little bit of film of what I was like before my wrestling matches. And I was always getting in my opponent's heads. Um, you know, this is a very physical sport. You know, we don't play with fucking balls. We're not, we're not doing that pussy shit. We're over there using our God given bodies, the purest of sport to dominate and put a, put another man's body in position to what we want. You know, we're trying to conquer another man's body. We're not trying to shoot a fucking ball. You know, there's a difference here. So a lot goes into it mentally. A lot goes into the thinking before a fight. You know, a lot of fights are won before the fight even starts. And I really believe that. I don't care if you have the best technique in the world. If you're not confident in your ability, it doesn't mean shit. And especially when you go out there on live television in front of thousands and thousands of fans, that really gets to you. You know, your arms and your legs get a little bit heavier. There's nothing more chaotic than stress. You know, you look at these guys that look so good in the gym. You have hour, hour and a half, two hour practices, and they look so sharp. But if they get in one 30 second exchange in a fight, they become tired. Why is that? The stress. And I try to get my opponents so fucking stressed out 
And I do a pretty good job of that because they do end up breaking. And Danny, we're going to wrap this up and just incredible opportunities for you. You've been knocking them out of the park. It's just really great to see you're at American top team. Unbelievable there. I'm curious. So who will you bring in with you to Japan? Yeah, you know, it, it's actually unfortunate. Mike Brown is my head coach and he has been in my corner every single fight of mine. But Dustin Poirier is fighting for the BMF title. So he's going to be with Dustin Poirier. So this is my first ever fight without my head coach and good friend, Mike Brown. Um, but I'll be taking out my boy from uh, college wrestling, my training partner, my teammate, Aaron Assad, who's also always in my corner. You know, he always has my back because on these fight weeks, there's always people trying to catch me slipping with their phones and try to get me trying to back down or whatever. I know he has my back. We're not going to ever let that happen. I'm also going to have Steve Mako out there, the best wrestling MMA coach in the game. Uh, Adriano Marias, the guy who beat Demetrius Johnson, is also going to be out there with us. So it's just pretty much an American top team takeover of Japan. You know, it's unfortunate that Mike Brown won't be with me. He's an absolute MMA guru. But, you know, it is what it is. I got other great coaches out there and great teammates out there. We're going to come back with a victory. Yeah, you mentioned that. What a backup to have. Those are A-listers as well. It's just great. Well, Danny, I, all the best on your fight. We'll be watching, checking it out, see you for the victory and all. And I, I got to end it with this, though, Danny. Have you learned any Russian? Are we doing any trash talking in Russian? We might do a little bit of trash talking Russian at the fight. I want to surprise him. I don't know if he speaks English or not. I want to whisper something in his ear and get in his head, though. So we'll see. The Italian gangster, Danny Savatella. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim.